Welcome to our video on solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Let's start off by taking a look at this example. It asks us to solve the quadratic equation by using the square root principle, which means if we square root both sides of this equation, we should be able to solve for x. Let's give it a try. On the left side, the square root of x minus five squared would just be x minus five equals, remember on the right side we'd have plus or minus the square root of 28. Now to solve for x, we can just add five to both sides. So we would have x equals five plus or minus square root 28. Now the square root of 28 does simplify, so let's go ahead and do that. 28 is four times seven, and four is a perfect square factor. So we would have x equals five plus or minus two square root seven. So the idea behind completing the square is we want to be able to factor the left side of the equation so that it's a perfect square trinomial, meaning it has two of the same factors as we see here. But in order to do that, we're gonna to have to take some steps to create a perfect square trinomial. So let's take a look at how we're gonna do that. Step one, we're gonna write the equation in this form where we move the constant term to the right side of the equation. And we'll also leave room because we're gonna be adding a special number to both sides of the equation. Next, if the leading coefficient a is not equal to one, we do have to divide every term by a. Third, we're gonna add one half times b squared to both sides of the equation. Remember, b is going to be the coefficient of the x term. So we'll take half of that, square it, and add it to both sides of the equation. Step four, factor the left side of the equation, and it should be a perfect square trinomial. So we'll write this as a binomial squared. Then we'll square root both sides of the equation and solve for x. Let's go ahead and give it a try. The first step here will be to add nine to both sides. Next, the leading coefficient is one, so we can skip that step. Now we'll take half of b and square it. Since b is equal to six, we're gonna take one half times six and then square it. Well, half of six would be three squared, so that'll give us nine. We're gonna add nine to both sides. Now there's a reason why I always like to show this calculation, and you'll see why in the next example. So we'll add nine here, and we'll add nine here. And the idea is this should now be a perfect square trinomial. Let's go ahead and factor it and see. We'll have a factor of x here and here. The factors of positive nine that add to positive six, that will be plus three and plus three. Notice we have two equal factors, which verifies this is a perfect square trinomial. And on the right side, we have 18. Let's rewrite this as the quantity x plus three squared equals 18. Now we'll square root both sides of the equation. On the left side, the square root of the quantity x plus three squared would just be x plus three equals plus or minus square root of 18. Don't forget your plus or minus here. And next, we'll subtract three on both sides. So we have x equals negative three plus or minus. Now the square root of 18 is going to simplify. 18 is nine times two, and nine is three times three. So we really have the square root of three times three times two, which simplifies to three square root two. So we have negative three plus or minus three square roots of two. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This one's gonna be a little more challenging. So the first step is to subtract 10 on both sides. Next, the leading coefficient is one, so we'll skip step two, we'll go to step three. We take half of b and then we square it. So we're gonna have one half times negative five and then we're gonna square that. Well, that'll be negative five halves squared, which is equal to 25 fourths we need to add 25 fourths to both sides of this equation. Now this is supposed to be a perfect square trinomial, but you may be asking, how are you gonna affect this if you have a fraction involved? And this is the main reason why I think it's so important to show the calculation of one half b squared. When we go to factor this, we know it's gonna be a perfect square trinomial. The number that goes here in this binomial factor will come from whatever number we squared to get 25 fourths. 
we squared negative 5 halves to get the 25 fourths, so this will be minus 5 halves. So that's the main reason why I always show this step. It makes factoring this much easier, especially when it involves a fraction. Okay, on the right side we have negative 10 plus 25 fourths. Well, negative 10 over 1 would be negative 40 over 4. Negative 40 over 4 plus 25 over 4 would be negative 15 fourths. Now we'll square root both sides of the equation. On the left side we have x minus 5 halves must equal, remember this is equal to the square root of negative 15 over the square root of 4. Well the square root of 4 would be 2. The square root of negative 15 would be i square root 15 and then don't forget the plus or minus. So the last step will be to add 5 halves to both sides. So our answer will be x equals 5 halves plus or minus i square root 15 all over 2. Now we do have a common denominator, so if we wanted to, we could write this as 5 plus or minus i square root 15 all over 2. It really just depends on the textbook you're reading. Let's go ahead and try one more. Okay, so step one, we will add 9 to both sides of this equation. The next step, our leading coefficient a is equal to 3, so we need to divide every term by 3. So now we have x squared plus 2 thirds x plus something must equal 3 plus something. So now we'll take half of b and square it. Again, we're going to show that work. 1 half times b, which is 2 thirds and then square that. Well, before we square it, this simplifies, so we actually have one-third squared, which is equal to one-ninth. So we're going to add one-ninth to both sides. Again, this is now a perfect square trinomial. Remember, the constant here will be whatever number we squared to get the one-ninth. Looking at our work, we had a positive one-third squared to give us the one-ninth, so we're going to have a plus one-third here in our binomial factors. This must equal, well, 3 over 1 plus 1 ninth. If we get a common denominator, this will be 27 ninths plus 1 ninth would be 28 ninths. Now we'll square root both sides of the equation. Here we have x plus 1 third must equal, now our denominator is a perfect square, so that'll be 3. Our numerator is going to be the square root of 28, which we simplified earlier. That was 2 square root 7 and of course the plus or minus to get our two solutions. So in our last step we will subtract one-third on both sides. So we'll have x equals negative one-third plus or minus two square root seven all over three. Or if we want we can write this as negative one plus or minus two square root seven all over three. That's it for completing the square. This is a good technique for solving quadratic equations that are not factorable. We will also use this technique to derive the quadratic formula in another video. Thank you for watching.